Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and today we find ourselves up here in production greenhouse number one. We wanted to come up here and show you, give you a little update on some of the plants that we are growing that you have seen since little tiny babies and to talk about a few other things. Now let's address the beautiful elephant that is in the room today. Look at these gorgeous violas. If you will remember back uh, weeks, month six eight weeks ago i don't remember how long ago what ago it was now we had just gotten in the little plugs for the baby violas these are those violas we have a fantastic customer gary who is a professional landscaper he has um a job that an account that he does downtown uptown charlotte at the bank of america and he needed to have red white and blue violas to plant in their beds i think january 1st so as soon as christmas is over he'll go in and take out all the christmas decor and then plant the red white and blue violas for their um, beds and containers so we were growing them for him but look at these these are some of the sweetest little faces now of course there's yellows and purples in here jerry added a few extra of those in with the order so that we could get a um, oh a different building okay so sorry so these are going to go into a different building but y'all after growing pansies versus violas in my own garden this year I really think I'm going to team Viola. They just have outperformed the pansies like unbelievably well. Um, you can still have a Viola with a nice size face on it. They have a sweet little smell to them. Um, yeah, so for me, the Violas have outperformed the pansies so far. In fact, there at the patio, you saw me um, early fall plant like the kale and the um, artemisia and then some pansies well the pansies just went so i ripped out the pansies and put violas in the violas are loving life so give you an update on that um also while we were here it is pretty obvious that we have a lot of proven winners annual uh excuse me perennials and shrubs growing in here now if you remember in production greenhouse one where we are this is an unheated greenhouse it's a cold frame um we might put heat in here at some point but for now and for the entire time that we have had it there is no um, heat source in here so it just is heats up normally with the great heat of the sun and we can lower it and raise the the size up and down so forth and so on these plants in here are doing great if you have been around Creekside for any length of time, you know that we are a Proven Winners Certified Garden Center. We work very closely with Proven Winners on a lot of projects and are big believers in Proven Winners simply because they have proven to be winners in our garden. We use them um, a lot. Almost exclusively, all of our annuals are Proven Winners and each year we add more perennials and shrubs to our line. When you're scanning and, and Jerry is kind of panning over this greenhouse, it's pretty obvious which perennials and which shrubs are proven winners. Of course, the vast majority of them are. There are a couple of black pots that you see that have perennials in them. Those are not proven winner um, plants. They're amazing plants, they're just not proven winners. As a consumer, sometimes it can be confusing as what are the proven winners? What is it not, especially the annuals, because you've never had to have a Proven Winners container with an annual. Well, beginning in the spring of 22, this coming spring, Proven Winners has implemented that all growers, us and large scale, any scale um, grower for Proven Winners has to have all of their Proven Winner plants must be in Proven Winner pots. So for you, the consumer, it is going to take out any kind of guesswork when you go to your local garden center, to your farmer's market, to a, a big box store, anywhere that you go. And if they say it's a proven winner's plant, then it must be in a proven winner's pot. Because in the past, the proven winner annuals do not have to be in a proven winner's pot. It just had to have the tag. All of that, it can be confusing, right? Is it, is it a proven winner's? Is it not? Why is it not in the container? 
Well, this coming year, everybody's gonna have to be in this, um, it's like your annuals will be in your, this is a 4.25 grande size. It is what the vast majority of proven winter annuals will come in. Some annuals are in gallons just because they're quite vigorous and they're, they're growing. Um, so this is your indication that this is truly a proven winter's plant if it's inside the container. Now, Creekside has grown all of our proven winners um, plants in their containers this past year. So when you came to the nursery and you came out to the shopping area around the pergola and you looked out, all you saw was a sea of white proven winter containers. Because for us, it is, they're great pots to work with. They're easy to use. We love that that when they, um, you put them in the, in the um, tray, they automatically fit perfectly. They nestle down right there, um, makes it really easy. They have great little slots for the tags to go in, but it just gives you a nice clean look across as far as the nursery, the retail center. It's a very pleasing to the eye. So, Every Proven Winners plant must be in a Proven Winners pot. The only exception would be if it was a hanging basket because there is no branded Proven Winners hanging basket, but it will have a beautiful um, Proven Winners tag on it so that you will know that those are Proven Winners plants. So that is something for you to be looking at in your garden centers come this coming spring. So that's across the board. Look for those pots at Creekside. Nothing's gonna be different. It'll all be the same, all a sea of white pots everywhere. Now, I do want to give you a little bit of an update on some things because here we are in December in this unheated cold frame greenhouse and we have got perennials that are loving life. This is a hardy geranium. This is a classic perennial. This is the, I'll let Jerry slide in here. Roseanne hardy geranium that does beautiful blue purple flowers. This is going to be hardy in zones five to eight. It is more of a trailer and a spreader as opposed to an upright um, bush. So it's nice and low but wide. Beautiful plant. It is requires more than four hours of sun per day. It will be a continuous bloomer from late spring to mid fall. This pairs beautifully with, you know, hostas and the steel bees, those part shade to, to part sun plants. This is a great one. I just, I love it. So wanted to show you that one. And then of course you can't miss the daisies down here. Good old Daisy May. Look at this. I really should clip these and take them home and put them in a bud vase because um, that is just the classic, most beautiful Shasta Daisy you ever did see. Now, even my Daisy May and I have the Banana Cream 2 in the garden, I'm still getting some sporadic blooms. Now, are they in all their glory? No, but they certainly are doing quite well and this sweet thing is doing beautiful in here as well. In fact, speaking of the banana cream too, come on down here. Look at this. If you're wondering what those noises are, it's a very windy day and we are in the greenhouse and some of the plastic is popping. So just ignore that. We're fine. All right. So this is banana cream too called banana cream two because there was a banana cream one this is the improved version banana cream is another shasta daisy where it starts out this beautiful kind of this buttery banana yellow as the flowers mature they will turn to a creamy white so on your plant you will have blooms of various shades of white and creamy yellow hence the banana cream pie reference. These are hardy in zones five to nine, beautiful, easy care plants. I will say that I think as a general rule, especially in our clay soil, they do not like to have really consistent wet feet. I think I accidentally killed like three of the Shasta daisies because I was trying them out in a new spot and they they didn't like wet feet. So 
do not plant them in an area that has consistent wet feet, especially if it's our clay soil, well draining soil. That's what they like. So all of these, of course, will be available in the spring, um, going from winter into spring, they will be available. Um, we have them in here they will not stay in here all winter these are very cold tolerant we were just kind of getting them nice and well rooted before we do move them out into the fields um, for the winter but we've got um, this is a phlox this is that opal essence phlox again now it's not blooming but it's got beautiful foliage right now our, again our main goal was to get these roots nice and well established before the real brutal cold hits and we stuck them outside. That's why they're in here. They will be moved. This is opalescence, which is a great one. Um, smells fantastic. If you have any questions, just go to provenwinners.com, type in the name and they'll tell you everything you've ever wanted to know. Um, this whole sea of green right here are various butterfly bushes and you can tell that they're starting to kind of they had a little bit of the cold hit them that's why they have some yellow leaves the butterfly bushes are semi evergreens so they will lose some of their leaves but not all of their leaves just like yours at home for these what we will do just like what you need to do to your butterfly bushes late winter going into spring you trim them back because they bloom on new growth we want to encourage those blooms so we will give them a nice shape up and then this hydrangea is clearly very happy this is invincible garnetta they are a fantastic smooth hydrangea very happy still have nice green leaves that garnetta is color specific so that means your soil ph does not change the color of the bloom it will be this great garnet color regardless of your soil ph we have found with all of the invincible hydrangeas from proven winners where we are north carolina zone 7b that they do the absolute best when they get morning sun afternoon shade even though on the tag it says it can do full sun to part shade with our heat and humidity and not cooling off at night they do the best morning sun afternoon shade so when you're picking out a spot for an invincible whether it's a limetta or garnetta um, a ruby whatever it may be just keep in mind give it a break from that hot afternoon sun garnetta is going to be nice and petite it's only going to be two and a half feet tall and wide so this would be perfect on the border of a flower bed even in a container it would be awesome and they are hardy in zones three to eight so extremely cold tolerant really adaptable beautiful red garnet color um jer is there anything else we need to talk about today he doesn't think so it is we were going to go outside and kind of give you an update and show you some of the shrubs but it is like incredibly windy and so we are going to kind of pass on that for today um but Pretty soon we will be moving these out because we will have all of our annuals coming in and we will need to make way for those. So we will be transitioning these babies out into the production fields so they can go to sleep for the winter. Um, but yeah, so that way we can get them all filled back up in here with annuals and hanging baskets. That's what the drippers are for above me. But as always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.